much should I spend using my credit card? Is one credit card enough? A high access guide. Hello there, it's High Access once again. Ready to dive into the world of credit cards and smart financial strategies? If that sounds like your kind of journey, then do me a solid. Hit that like button and smash the subscribe button below. Oh, and if you're intrigued by the idea of boosting your income through an online business, check out the link in the description. I've got you covered. Now, today's discussion tackles a question that echoes in the minds of many. When is the right time to snag a new credit card? And how often should you really be applying for one? Trust me, it's a brilliant query and the answer can be a maze of complexity due to differing rules from various issuers. Chase plays by their own rules, Citibank has theirs, and Bank of America has a whole set too. But for now, let's keep it smooth and simple. We are setting the groundwork for a solid rule that'll be your compass. Whether you're snagging your first card, second, third, or even counting beyond your fingers, this rule will keep you on track. Not only will you ace the timing of your applications, but you'll also supercharge your credit score and rewards. Plus, we'll steer clear of that danger zone where overloading on cards could lead to a credit score catastrophe. Let's dive right in. Setting your expectations Before we dive into the details, I want to lay down a clear disclaimer. The advice I'm sharing here is based on general guidelines to boost your chances of approval while safeguarding your credit score. Remember, this isn't an inflexible law etched in stone. There are instances where you could get two cards from different banks within the same month, or even two cards from the same bank. Heck, in some cases, you might pull off snagging three cards within a single month. But here's the deal. Especially in the early stages of your credit card journey, obtaining multiple new cards in a brief span might cause a temporary dip in your credit score. This could, in turn, complicate your attempts to score more cards in the short even midterm. The reason behind this is simple. Your credit report gets inundated with inquiries and fresh accounts being added. It's a bit like filling up a glass too fast. The spillage could make it harder to add more liquid later. So keep this in mind as we explore the ins and outs of the credit card application game. The simple answer? During your initial year of building credit, it's all about establishing a strong foundation. Secured credit cards are a fantastic starting point. They give you the opportunity to show responsible credit behavior without diving headfirst into unsecured credit. We recommend nabbing one or two secured credit cards. Use this time to lay down a solid foundation for your credit score. Then, once you've conquered that initial year, you can start applying for one card roughly every three months. Simple as that. But why? Let's break it down. In the credit world, patience can be a virtue. When you're just starting, it's crucial to show creditors that you're responsible and reliable. Secured credit cards do this beautifully. By using a secured card and making timely payments, you're demonstrating your credit worthiness in a controlled environment. This is like nailing your warm-up exercises before attempting the main act. And, importantly, secured cards typically have lower credit limits, which helps you avoid getting in over your head too soon. As you stride into your second year, things shift. With a year of responsible credit use under your belt, you've built a track record that's a solid foundation for more credit responsibility. At this point, the one card every three months rules kicks in. Why? Because applying for too many cards in a short time can raise eyebrows. When a lender sees multiple credit applications in a short span, it might raise concerns about why you're suddenly seeking so much credit. They might wonder if you're in a financial bind, which can make you appear riskier. This could lead to higher interest rates or even denials. By spacing out your applications over three months, you're showcasing steady financial habits. You're not impulsively diving into a bunch of credit lines, you're strategically managing your credit growth. This approach allows lenders to see that you're taking things one step at a time, which can boost your credibility in their eyes. Of course, individual scenarios vary. Some people have unique financial situations that might allow them to get multiple cards in quick succession. But for most folks, the one card every three months strategy aligns with the general principles of responsible credit building and avoids potential pitfalls. So, while there might be the occasional credit card whiz who scores multiple cards in one go, my aim is to provide guidance that works for the majority of credit enthusiasts, helping you carve out a strong credit journey and maximize your potential rewards. Remember, this isn't about being rigid. It's about being strategic. Each credit card you add to your wallet has implications for your credit score, your financial health, and your overall financial strategy. 
With this understanding, you can navigate the world of credit cards with confidence and purpose. So, whether you're just starting out or already have a few cards under your belt, remember to use credit wisely and the rewards will follow. Building your credit Picture this. Two individuals with identical credit scores of 685, both looking to add a new card to their wallets. However, it's their credit utilization that sets them apart. On the left, we have the gentleman in the blue tie. He's utilizing $3,000 of his $4,000 credit limit, leading to a utilization rate of 75%. When he applies for a new credit card, unfortunately, he's met with a denial. Why? Well, the high utilization sends a signal that he's using a substantial portion of his available credits, which can be interpreted as potential financial strain. Now, shifting our attention to the guy in the blue shirt on the other side, here's a different story. With a mere $400 out of his $1,500 limit in use, his utilization stands in the sweet spot of 10% to 30%, a range often recommended. While not a strict rule, this is a guideline that many credit experts suggest for optimal credit health. Due to his lower utilization, he is approved for the new card. Even though both individuals support the same credit score, the underlying utilization factor is the game changer. This showcases how banks delve beyond the surface and scrutinize various details on your credit report to evaluate your credit worthiness. They're interested in assessing your financial habits and how you manage your available credit. Now, it's crucial to note that the example I just gave is an illustration to convey a point. Credit approval is influenced by an interplay of factors including payment history, credit age, types of credit, and more. Each bank has its own criteria and while credit scores are an essential element, they're not the sole factor in the decision-making process. Remember, when it comes to credit, it's all about the big picture. Responsible credit use, timely payments, and keeping a close eye on your utilization can greatly enhance your chances of not only getting approved for new cards, but also securing favorable terms and interest rates. Setting up the game plan Now, let's find out how to enhance your odds of credit card approval while simultaneously safeguarding your credit score. It's all about finding that sweet spot where you can responsibly expand your credit portfolio without jeopardizing your financial stability. Here's the plan we'll follow to achieve this balance. To kick things off, we need to grasp a few fundamental concepts. The pivotal factors influencing your approval chances are your credit score, the specific components shaping your score, and your income. These three pillars lay the groundwork for our strategy so let's dive into why they hold such significance. First in line is your credit score, a numerical representation of your credit worthiness ranging from 300 to 850 with higher scores being better. The mantra is straightforward. Aim to elevate your score as high as possible. Now, let's unravel the credit factors that compose your score. Payment history claims the largest share at 35%, showcasing your consistency in making on-time payments. Right beside it is the utilization ratio wielding a 30% influence. This ratio signifies how much of your available credit you're using with lower percentages being more favorable. The length of your credit history commands 15% of your score reflecting how seasoned your credit accounts are. Meanwhile, the types of accounts in your credit mix share 10% acknowledging your financial diversity. And lastly, new accounts also snag 10% considering how frequently you open new lines of credit. Here's the game plan. Pay your bills on time in full before the due date to cultivate a positive payment history. Strive to keep your credit card balances in check, ideally within the 10% to 30% utilization range across all cards. Maintain your early cards open for the long haul as a lengthier credit history showcases responsible financial behavior. Ensuring a mix of credit types can be beneficial, but remember, it's only 10% of your score, so don't overcomplicate things. Don't give in to the allure of numerous new accounts with a short period. Such a spree can lead to a surge in inquiries and decrease your average account age, both of which could negatively affect your score. Lastly, your income serves as a key determinant of your credit limit. Generally, higher income translates to a more substantial credit line while lower income results in a more conservative credit line. Remember, we're crafting a comprehensive approach tailored to most individuals. While there might be outliers who can manage multiple new accounts, this strategy sets you on a steady course. By optimizing these credit aspects, 
you're effectively aligning yourself for consistent growth in your credit journey. Your income is the bottom line. Banks take into account not only your credit score and credit factors, but also your income, and there's a valid reason behind this trifecta. It all boils down to risk assessment. Banks want to ascertain the likelihood of repayment, especially in case of financial hardships. Let's break down this crucial piece of the puzzle. Imagine a scenario where an individual with a limited income is granted an exorbitantly large credit line. From the bank's perspective, this would be a risky move. Why? Well, if this individual faces unexpected financial difficulties, they might struggle to pay off a substantial balance. If this person defaults on their payments, the bank would be left holding the bag, potentially incurring significant losses. However, it's a two-way street. If the bank ends up taking a hit due to a default, it's likely they'll sever the relationship with the customer. This is hardly a favorable outcome for the consumer as their credit score and financial reputation would take a hit and they'd lose access to that line of credit. So here's the key. If your income is ample to cover your living expenses with room to spare, banks are more inclined to consider you a reliable candidate for a higher credit line. Demonstrating your capacity to manage your finances and responsibly repay your debts works in your favor. Essentially, by proving that you can comfortably handle your financial obligations, you're signaling to the bank that you're a low-risk borrower. In essence, income is a crucial component in this triad because it provides banks with a clearer picture of your financial stability. It's not just about the numbers. It's about the alignment between your income, expenses, and potential credit line. This holistic view enables banks to make informed decisions that are both beneficial to them and advantageous for you as the consumer. Avoiding mistakes To navigate the world of credit cards wisely and ensure your approval odds remain high without jeopardizing your credit standing, a strategic approach is essential. Let's break down the steps to take in both your first year of credit building and beyond to secure new cards while safeguarding your credit health. In the inaugural year of establishing your credit profile, the primary goal is to lay a solid foundation. To achieve this, I recommend obtaining one or two credit cards ideally spaced a few months apart. In this phase, it's prudent to lean toward secured credit cards. These are especially favorable if you lack an existing credit history or are aiming to rebuild your credit from a less favorable position. Secured cards offer an accessible entry point into the world of credit and can set the stage for positive relationships with financial institutions. Remember, the focus here isn't solely about the quantity of cards, but about responsibly building credit. During this critical initial stage, concentrate on cultivating positive payment history and showcasing financial responsibility. This entails utilizing your initial cards judiciously and staying on top of payments. These actions contribute to enhancing five fundamental credit factors, payment history, utilization ratio, length of credit history, types of credit used, and new credit. As you diligently work on these factors, you'll gradually observe your credit score ascending. In an ideal scenario, you'll see it enter the high 600s or even reach the coveted 700s. As you transition into the second year and beyond, your approach can shift to include reaping the benefits of rewards cards. My recommendation here is to apply for one card approximately every three months on average. This rate allows for a steady introduction of new products into your credit portfolio while avoiding an excessive influx of new inquiries and accounts which could potentially diminish your credit score in the near term. It's crucial to be mindful of individual banks' rules and policies as well. Some banks may frown upon users who obtain cards for the initial sign-up bonuses and then barely engage with the card thereafter. The one-card-every-three-months rhythm strikes a harmonious balance. Not only does it open doors to new credit products, but it also respects your ability to meet any required spending thresholds for sign-up bonuses without rushing or disrupting your regular spending habits. This approach is a strategic dance between responsible credit building prudent rewards maximization, and adherence to bank-specific guidelines. By embracing this methodology, you can cultivate a robust credit portfolio over time while safeguarding your credit score and financial well-being. Wrapping up all these credit card insights, if you found this video helpful and think others could benefit, give it a thumbs up and share the credit wisdom with them. And hey, don't miss out on the next money-savvy discussions. Subscribe to High Excess, ring that notification bell, and stay in the credit loop. Before you go, make sure to explore the links waiting for you down in the description.
If you're ready to dive into the world of new credit cards, those referral links have you covered. And for those of you with entrepreneurial ambitions, looking to boost your income and card eligibility, there's a link for starting your own online venture too. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. Until next time, remember, you're not just great, you're high excess levels of great.